This is the FM Gold Channel of All India Radio. In the program News Analysis, now we bring you a discussion on right to reject candidates. The participants are Katie Stilsi, constitutional expert, and KV Prasad, associate editor, The Tribune. In a judgment that will hold far-reaching consequences on Indian elections, the Supreme Court on Friday ruled that the electors will have a fresh column available on the electronic voting machines. That means none of the above is acceptable to a voter. In simple terms, it means the voter will have now the right to reject the candidates fielded by different political parties or individuals who field themselves in electoral politics. This has been a demand that has been pending for a long time. The Election Commission itself had made a recommendation almost a decade ago, but nothing had moved till a petition by civil rights movement. Mr. Tulsi, first and foremost, we would like to understand the significance and the timing of the decision. It would not be perhaps accurate to say that it's a new right that has been created by the Supreme Court. The right of a voter to vote or not to vote was always there. It has been deemed to be a form of expression under Article 19 of the Constitution of India. It is also recognized by Section 79D of the Representation of People's Act. So it's always been there since 1950. The only difference is that since 1950, when we had voting by ballot paper. At that time, the voter exercised his right to reject everybody by not putting a cross against any name. So that was perfectly valid. There was no problem with that. As long as ballot paper was in use, the right of a voter to reject was inherent and he could exercise simply by not putting a cross. It would be invalid, but nevertheless he exercised his choice. But when we introduced the voting machine, the voting machine requires you to cast your vote, to press some button. If you don't want to press any, in that case, under Rule 49O, those who don't want to press, they had to sign a declaration or put their, some impression against the declaration in Form 17, which compromised the secrecy. Because the voter who doesn't want to vote in favor of any of the candidates doesn't want to be identified. When you ask him to sign that declaration, this person has entered, he has been given the option, but he has not pressed any button to prevent the election becoming invalid. There was a requirement of a separate declaration. Secrecy violates the basic principle of elections. It is to provide, to respect that right of secrecy that the Supreme Court has now in the changed situation where we are using electronic voting machines in those machines, you should provide a procedure which is as secret as the one where the secrecy of the person in whose favor you have cast your franchise is respected. So, right to reject was there. But now the Supreme Court's direction is only to the extent that this right to reject must be kept confidential because this is also part of the election process. So, therefore, to say that a new right has been created by the Supreme Court perhaps is not very accurate. The fact that you have a column entry under a specific category that the voter has decided to exercise his franchise in the column, none of the above, which never, as you rightly pointed out, did exist in a different form and format or where the member's right was compromised. To that extent, it gets more institutionalized, if one may say so, in terms of recording of votes. It's a procedure of exercising this right which already existed under Article 19.1a and also under Section 79d. So it's that right which is now being effectuated in the new procedure of casting your expression. And that procedure is that the secrecy of your not having chosen anybody will not be compromised under any circumstances. Mr. Tulsi rightly pointed out the fine aspect of the law which the Supreme Court had now clarified. One issue is, uh, over the years, there have been demands, whether it was election committee itself had written, proposed it in 2001, it kept on reiterating the subject, 2004, they made a recommendation, the law commission had its own view, we had several committees which went into it, electoral reforms, I think except the Goswami committee which did not want the negative vote. How do you see that? Because on one hand, you had people not exercising, as you said, the 49-0, was a minuscule people went actually would go and stand up in a queue and say, okay, I'm not going to vote. 
that would only prevent bogus voting because a genuine voter goes to the polling station and says, I'm not interested in any. Do you see a significant shift expected with now voters exercising the disenchantment with the, all the candidates who are offering themselves as possible representative? There are always problems. There is no system of voting which is perfect. But I believe in the sanctity of the constitution and the constitutional processes. India is extremely fortunate in having preserved its democracy and it's a vibrant democracy. It's the largest democracy in the world. Crores and crores of people exercise their franchise and the governments are voted in and voted out in a constitutional manner without any letter hindrance. Therefore, I am not in favor of complicating the procedure as provided in the constitution. I am not in favor of making it unworkable, right or recall. In a large democracy like ours, we cannot complicate this process. Sections of this society or the voters are completely illiterate. Any complication that we may introduce in the procedure of voting and electing our representatives is wrought with grave dangers. So therefore, the Supreme Court has not ventured into anything else than providing secrecy to a voter who is exercising his franchise through electronic voting machine by saying none of the above so that he is not required to sign any declaration as required under section 49.0. Uh, Mr. Tulsi, one of the things of course does call for a question and it probably would lead to a debate as to the efficacy of this whole, because it already existed in, as you rightly said, in the uh, yes. statute books and in the laws of the rules governing elections. Because yesterday, former Chief Election Commissioner Mr. Gopal Swami, who was also pushing for it, told one of the newspapers that even if 90 voters in electorate of 100 persons press none of the above button, the poll will be decided in favor of the candidate who gets the maximum number of the remaining 10 votes, That's because right. that is the first post system That's that we follow. Right. So the efficacy for an average voter, what exactly would this determine in terms of what message is the electorate trying to send? I remember in 1983 when the elections were taking place in Assam, all Assam Students Union was opposing the holding of elections on account of uh, illegal migrants etc. They were forcing people not to exercise their franchise and in that process there was people's curfew, they were not being allowed to come out of their houses and yet Mrs. Gandhi made it clear that the electoral process will not be allowed to be hijacked by anybody. There were some constituencies where only 42 people cast their vote but they were declared elected. So democracy must not be compromised on account of anything. Even if 90% says none of the above, the remainder is going to get elected. We must have a working system. We can't provide for obstructions in the way of elections and in being able to run our democratic institutions. The court did say, for democracy to survive, it is essential that the best available men should be chosen for proper governance of the country. This can be best achieved through men of high moral and ethical values who win elections on a positive vote. It's for the people to judge who are worthy of being their representatives. So do you see a visualized situation where incrementally political parties will come under pressure with more and more people who have currently decided not to go and exercise the franchise but actually go and exercise their franchise and say none of the above. Will this is what the thought process that actually drives this whole cleansing if one may no, say no. so? No, no. It's not to propagate the system of none of the above that the Supreme Court has come to this conclusion. Supreme Court is simply striking down Rule 49O, which violates the secrecy clause. Secrecy is fundamental to fair elections, free and fair elections. So therefore, they have struck down 49O and have required them to operationalize the secrecy of a person who does not want to cast his vote in favor of any other candidate. In fact, the judgment also notes that the right to cast a negative vote at yes. a time when electioneering is in full swing will foster the purity of the election pro electoral process yes. and also fulfill one of its objectives, namely wide participation of the people. 
all these are expression of views in support of the fact that right not to vote in favor of any of the given candidates is also a part of 191a it is also a part of section 79d this is a right therefore which has already been provided in the constitution and also in the laws made by the parliament now the supreme court is merely operationalizing that rule because of the change in the system in which we are casting our vote and that is from paper ballot we have moved on to electronic voting machines so in those machines also you need to provide a system by which a person who doesn't want to give vote to any one of the candidates in his constituency is able to do so without revealing his identity to anybody mr tulsi one of the issues that has been raised by some political parties after the supreme court judgment is the country also needs to look at the comprehensive electoral reforms we've had this several reports as i said dinesh goswami committee report then you had the indrajit gupta committee report the administrative reforms commission also looked at the working of constitution under justice venkata chalaya i think they also looked into various aspects supreme court has been addressing some of these issues whether it is now the none of the above this is not really the function of the supreme court electoral reforms should worry the parliament and the parliamentarians the question really is one of the fundamental defects in the system is concentration of all power in the hands of the party bosses they are the ones who are going to distribute the tickets why can't we have primaries mr rahul gandhi had come out with this idea and the other parties are not buying it we can have primaries and let people express their view with regard to who is the best candidate for a particular party each of the parties can perhaps have some kind of a system unless the candidates are chosen from the ground level amongst the people themselves and lots of ills in the system will continue because money will then play a much bigger role in the elections so this is something which has to be done by the parliament and the political parties this is not really the job of the supreme court one more issue is of how soon do you think this thing can be put into because the election commission of course has already issued a statement that it will make appropriate changes in part 2 of form 17c used during counting and result sheets and, and what are technicalities and since we are going to face assembly elections in five states towards the end of this year do you think a roll out is well within the well election commission seems to be saying that they are ready they will be able to make these changes even for the assembly election which is very welcome so let us hope that the right is operationalized in the very first elections that will take place after the judgment of the supreme court so the judgment also came at a time when just about a few days ago the supreme court gave a very in july they gave a decision on convicted legislatures and parliamentarians and then of course this whole halabulu about the ordinance that has the supreme followed. court has not done anything except to say that there is a discrimination people who are not members they are disqualified as soon as the order of conviction comes whereas those who are members of the house they continue for them there is a different provision so that provision being uh, discriminatory that was struck down the supreme court has not made any law on its own but then everything is there that the greater transparency in electoral process is what uh, the law yes. wants and what people want and probably the mood of the nation is also that increasing transparency in electoral processes so that less vitiation takes place and best candidates are elected to right, represent right. the country and that's right that's people. in everybody's interest that must be done as soon as possible thank you very much mr tulsi you are listening to a discussion on right to reject candidates the participants were kts tulsi constitutional expert and kv prasad associate editor the tribune it came to you in the program news analysis produced and presented by the news services division of all india radio this program is also available on our website newsonair.nic.in You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail dot com.